Hey guys, what's up? It's Lucas here again, coming at you today with another throwback unboxing video. This time we have the Palm Trio 700P smartphone. Yep, that's right. This is an actual smartphone from 2006, before Android, before iPhone. And yet you may be surprised just how many tasks this device has in common with the smartphone you might be using right now in 2020. Let's open it up and dive right in. So as you can see, this unit is still brand new in the original box. I managed to snag this guy on eBay for just about $20, which is quite a far cry from its original MSRP of $649 US. Now, this is actually a Canadian model, so it is carrier locked to TELUS, but that doesn't matter a whole lot seeing as North American carriers have almost universally dropped support for these devices by now. Although, interestingly enough, you can still use a Palm smartphone as your daily driver in some other countries. If we take a look around the box, you'll see some reasons why you might want to do so. Specs include an Intel X-Scale processor clocked at 312MHz, 128MB of RAM, about 60 of which are partitioned off as user storage, it might not sound like a lot, but at the time it was plenty for apps and games, with SD card support handling larger files like images, movies, and music. The screen is a cute 320 by 320 at 2 inches, giving you a surprisingly decent 226 ppi. There is no front facing camera, but there is a 1.3 megapixel shooter on the back. This model does not support Wi-Fi, but it does feature Bluetooth 1.2, and even a 2.5mm headphone jack. It could even make phone calls and browse the internet with 3G wireless data thanks to that fast mobile web browser. And of course, it is running PalmOS version 5.4.9, which was the real appeal of a phone like this back in the day. Palm had a long history of smart pocket devices, then known as PDAs, before breaking into the smartphone world, so a Palm phone was a great way to access a huge library of apps while remaining connected to the online and cellular world. In fact, you can still go online with this device even today using Bluetooth LAN, but unfortunately most HTTPS sites are incompatible. One site you can visit though is PalmDB. I've been gathering apps and archives with the rest of the Palm community for a few years now. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out our efforts and download some apps to your Palm. Moving on though, at the bottom of the box we can see a list of all the included contents. A Trio 700P of course, a USB cable for synchronizing with a PC, a user removable lithium ion battery, a travel charger aka a C adapter in this case as well as a stylus, headphones, and desktop software CD-ROM. Not a bad list for such a small package. Let's take a look. Popping open the top flaps here, we are immediately greeted by a collection of getting started guides. If you know my channel, you know I like to joke about nobody ever reading these, but Palm devices are a personal exception. I find these old manuals are a really fascinating insight into the way we viewed and interacted with technology in the past, like installing software for your smartphone onto a PC via CD-ROM, for example. Palm really did love their manuals. As you can see here, the so-called quick reference guide is more of a book. Good reading material for a quarantine, perhaps? If we pop open the plastic sleeve, we'll find some more materials as well, such as our limited warranty, definitely expired by now, as well as an included universal screen protector, that's nice to see. And as promised, the Palm desktop software installation CD. You can still use this with Windows 10, by the way, and will allow you to synchronize your apps, contacts, to-do list, and more without the use of an SD card reader or wireless data connection, which couldn't be taken for granted at the time. It also couldn't be taken for granted that users were familiar with basic properties and functions of a Palm device, let alone a smartphone. Despite being frequently used in the home, Palm always marketed themselves more towards business users, and their manuals reflected that with their detailed instructions. 
It's almost documentation rather than a typical manual. This one does have multiple languages though, accounting for some of that thickness. If you recall, the last time I unboxed a Palm device, the manual was even thicker and all in English. I'll put up a card for that unboxing if you want to check it out. I managed to snag a Palm 5 from 1999, still in the original seal. Pretty interesting stuff, if you ask me. But of course, you're not here for manuals, so let's move right on to the contents of this box. On the right, we have an 1800 mAh battery, more on that later. And on the left, we have the Palm 700P itself, still wrapped neatly in plastic. We'll set that off to the side while we continue our tour. This battery might not sound like much on paper, but with careful usage, a Palm can easily last a week or more on a single charge. I'm not sure about this particular battery yet, but we'll see if it still works after 14 years in a moment. Moving underneath the top compartment, we have a handful of accessories, such as these included 2.5mm headphones. Earbuds at this period of time were not the most ergonomic, but they had a nice analog sound and I'm eager to try these. Next up we have our travel charger, otherwise a simple AC adapter with a proprietary connection, but you won't be required to use it because you can also trickle charge over USB using this included cable. And it looks like this one has an extended head, allowing pass-through power for the travel charger in case you need to power up more quickly. That's enough of that though, let's turn our attention to the Trio 700P and see what this smartphone thing is all about. The phone is mostly plastic, but with a nice duotone silver look to it that sits firmly in business casual territory. I think it still looks pretty satisfying myself, like the feeling of peeling protective plastic off the screen of a 14 year old device. Clearly there is a lot going on here. We've got a full QWERTY keyboard on the front, as well as a full array of four programmable application buttons and five-way navigator, traditional for Palm. Above that, we also have a green button for sending and answering calls, and a red one for hanging up and turning the screen or phone on and off. Notice I said phone separately meaning you can disable cellular connectivity to save battery and use the Trio as just a PDA. The keyboard feels pretty good. The right side is the only empty space on the Trio, owing to the stylus you see there at the top. On the bottom, we have an array of inputs, starting with that 2.5mm headphone jack, and followed by the proprietary USB and AC adapter connections, and of course a microphone for phone calls on the right. On the left side, we have our volume rocker and yet another programmable button. This one is mapped to voice memos by default, so you can record a reminder for yourself just by pressing and holding. Pretty neat. On the back, we have our speaker and user removable battery compartment, and another protective film for the camera and selfie mirror. A pretty forward looking feature for a rear facing camera, if you ask me. The busyness continues on top with a dedicated silent mode switch, an IR blaster, and an SD card slot with a dummy card unit inside that just went into orbit. Watch out not to lose your real cards when you're out on the street. And of course, this being a palm, we do have a nice silver stylus docked in the compartment here. This stylus is metal and can make navigating the resistive touchscreen more precise. However, you might find you don't use it as much on the Trio, since you have that QWERTY keyboard for input, instead of Palm's graffiti input method. In fact, you'll notice a graffiti input area is nowhere to be found. All in all, the device feels surprisingly great in the hand. Of course, it's thick and it's heavy by today's standards, but it's also small and easily manageable with one hand. It might not be great for watching movies, but I think I could get used to it for other tasks like Twitter, Facebook, or Google Maps. Yes, it was all here, in that sense, not a lot has changed in 14 years. But we're not done yet. Now that we've got the Trio 700P unboxed and unpeeled, it'd be a shame not to give that 1800 mAh user replaceable battery a try. The rear battery cover slides off easily enough, once you know what you're doing at least. 
and inside we have not just a battery compartment, but all the important ID numbers for this phone. Might seem like a hopeless endeavor, but let's go ahead and line up these gold contacts and take this 14-year-old battery for its first spin. As you can see with that flash, surprisingly enough, the trio powers right on, illuminating the keyboard and face buttons. Definitely a nice touch. Boot time certainly isn't bad. It's at least as fast as my Google Pixel, if not faster. Take that, modern technology. Here we can proceed with the initial setup, as well as take some of the other functions for an early spin. One interesting quirk I'd forgotten about is the need to confirm changes in ringer volume with that extra side button. You can definitely tell this was the adolescent age of mobile user interfaces, especially as we proceed past the useless access logo, thanks for nothing, to the touchscreen calibration dialog. Palm screens were resistive or pressure sensitive. No 10 finger recognition here, though in practice, a fingernail was usually good enough. Okay, if flying SD cards and immortal batteries weren't big enough surprises for you, this one takes the cake. Despite this phone being locked to a Canadian carrier and me being in the US, the Trio 700P automatically picked up the current date and time from a local 3G mobile network, all without service or a data plan. This really blew my mind when I realized what happened, and makes me curious what will happen on January 1st, 2032 when the internal Palm calendar has run out of dates. Will there be any signal left for this phone by then? Time will tell, but it survived 14 years, and 2032 is just 12 years away. Trio is now walking us through the basics. It really places an emphasis on the 5-way navigator, and even uses it for something Palm calls KeyGuard, an early precursor to modern smartphone lock screens. With that out of the way, we're finally greeted by an actual phone interface. You can see we are roaming, but we do have three bars of signal and about 50% battery. At the bottom of the interface is a quick launch list of your favorite applications, and touching at the top gives us a drop-down menu with a more extensive list of settings and info. We won't be making any calls here, but one feature that works anywhere is the camera. Images clock in at 1280 by 1024 resolution, or video at 352 by 288 and 30 frames per second. There's also a 2x digital zoom, in case those figures are too high for you. Of course, this is a palm, and pressing the home button will take you to the familiar grid of icons with a healthy amount of apps built in. By default, the front-facing hardware buttons will take you to your phone, calendar, and emails. You can also write documents in standard office formats with docs to go or jot down old-fashioned Palm memos. And believe it or not, there's a lot more you can do with this device too, even in 2020. It may be old school, but it's still pretty cool technology. The Trio 700P was a late entry among Palm devices, but it's a great example of what early smartphones could do. Again, if you have any Palm devices still lying around, or you'd like to buy one with your pocket change, I'd recommend checking out PalmDB in the description below. Palm was an important part of tech history, and their devices deserve to be remembered and preserved. That about does it for this unboxing though. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you did indeed enjoy this video, and check out my website at lucasc.me. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.